As always, first, full disclosure. I didn't buy this BNC Model 577 Pulse Generator. It was sent to me by the Berkeley Nucleonics Corporation, free of charge, for review. Though, I will have to send back this unit after I reviewed it. Operating such a pulse slash delay generator is not as straightforward as, say, operating an oscilloscope or a function generator. Therefore, before we even try to switch it on, we shall have a look at its principle of operation, that is, the different building blocks inside here and how they interact with each other. First, we have the T0 internal system timer and mode generator, which creates a pulse train, yeah, almost arbitrary pulse train, or even single pulses. That T0 pulse train is fed to the eight channel timers and mode generators for the channels A to H, and each of those modules can modify the incoming T0 pulse train. For example, delay the pulses a specific amount. Those modified, for example, delayed pulses are then fed into the output multiplexer. And in the simplest case, the output multiplexer just delivers the output from the timer and mode generator A to the output A and yeah, H to output H and everything straight through in between. But you can also combine the output of arbitrary timers and mode generators to any specific output. And of course you have an analog output stage yeah, for each channel A through H where you can set the voltage level of the output you get actually at your BNC connectors. Finally, we have a clock governing the whole thing, the timers mainly. First, I want to have a look at that T0 module here. What kind of pulse trains you can actually generate. Then I want to advance to the channel timers and mode generators, what options you have here to modify that pulse train. Yeah, go through the options of the output multiplexer and what you can actually uh, set in the output stages. Of course, it would be nice to be able to have a look at the output of the T0 module, the T0 pulse train, uh, yeah, without having to set up all the other modules downstream first, uh, because then we would be jumping uh, yeah, uh, through all the system options at once and uh, yeah, that wouldn't be very productive. And there is a way to have a look at that pulse train. At the back of the unit, you find a connector clock out. And this connector clock out cannot only give you yeah, a signal from the reference signal from the internal clock between 10 and 100 megahertz and some steps, but it can also provide you the T0 pulse train. So, let's have a look at the back of the unit and yeah, for that purpose I take the stand out of the way. Uh, please remember it's a stand, it's not a carrying handle. <clears throat> okay, uh, so at the back we have uh, yeah, another power switch, a hard power switch this time, fuse holder, IEC power connector. Yeah. Nothing special here. Put that in, put that on the on positions. Uh, you have, uh, of course, a USB and an RS232 connector, so you can remotely control that thing. And uh, I think there's also a LabVIEW plugin, LabVIEW library available for that unit. And you have these nice, let's get the cable out of the way. 
plug in and clock out connectors and we just yeah plug in an oscilloscope probe here with a bnc connector into the clock out to capture our t0 signal okay now that we have everything connected let's get to business you switch the unit on with the soft power button at the front and it boots up quite fast uh, yeah that's not on the uh, only on the video camera this interference lines here something with the display and uh, yeah the camera chip and good practice if you switch that thing on and you don't know in which state it is is to go to the system menu to the storage and yeah you can call the uh, menus which are labeled here by the buttons below it and then navigate by that turn knob here so you go to storage to go there you can either press that button or press next okay and when we are in storage you have uh, yeah we will look at to that maybe in detail later but you have that button here load default and that is quite important uh, because yeah you you don't know what the output voltages are the that uh, the thing is set to and uh, yeah so just load the defaults to go back and then it sets current config zero to the factory settings and to get out of that storage menu you simply select yeah you go back to system that's it we are now in factory defaults the settings for the yeah, bnc connector for clock out on the back are available through that ref sorry ref t0 button and yeah there you see we can select either t0 or anything between 10 megahertz and one 100 megahertz output from the external clock so uh, let's set up an oscilloscope and watch the behavior of that output and i set it initially to 10 megahertz here and we have as expected a 10 megahertz signal at the output on the back the clock out and i can change that using the ref menu to let's say 20 megahertz and i don't need to press uh, the button here uh, the knob here or the next button i can also press the menu button itself to select the next value so 20 megahertz but we wanted to have the t0 output at the back and i will zoom in on the uh, display in a second I just wanted to point out that the menu here is actually also displaying the mode you're in so ref output or clock out output at the back is currently at t0 if i switch it back to 10 megahertz it will display ref 10 and yeah and so on so let's go to ref zero and we see nothing the reason being the unit is currently in stop mode and you have here in the upper left corner you have a heartbeat icon and yeah this very prominent run stop button puts it either in run mode or in stop mode so we press that one the heartbeat comes on and we have a pulse at t0 and if i zoom in on the time scale here uh, then we should be able to see yeah a pretty regular pulse train that's just the standard setting and uh, what kind of pulse trains we can actually create yeah with that t0 module that's what we will talk about now the general mode of t0 you set via that mode button here 
So currently it says mode continuous, but you have three other modes available, single shot, burst and duty cycle. And which each mode comes a different set of parameters. So for mode continuous, we have the time between pulses. And that's in second and you can either set it uh, whether the knob and the cursor keys here. So for example, yeah, we can select the digit we want to change and then we can increase that. And yeah, there's of course an overflow. So no worries at all. In single shot mode, yeah, there's not really a parameter, so I won't go in there. I mean, it's still displaying your T0 time between pulses, but that's not very interesting because it's only a single shot. In burst mode, you can also define the time between pulses and how many pulses you want to get out of the T0 unit after you press the run button. That is, you trigger the whole thing. You see, I went to, yeah, burst mode and my heartbeat stopped here. And uh, yeah, of course you can change the time, but you also can change the number of pulses in a burst and uh, yeah, to switch between the parameters, you simply press the next button. And a nice feature, I haven't shown it here, is uh, of course for these numerical parameters, you have that keypad here. So if I want 100 pulses, I can say, okay, 100 pulses, enter. And if I want another time between pulses, I can also enter that directly through the keypad. So let's say 0.001, so one millisecond enter. Yeah, it's quite convenient. And the last mode is duty cycle. And there you have three parameters. You have again the time between pulses. Yeah, I set that to one millisecond for now. But you also have a number of on pulses followed by off pulses. So yeah, uh, I guess you can <laughs> go here to really large values. Yes, you can. <laughs> and yeah, followed by, let's say 50,000 off pulses. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I'm just showing you how to enter these values. And now we will have a look at the different, mo different modes on the oscilloscope. We've already seen the continuous mode with run and stop. Yeah, no pulses. And in single shot, yeah, your heartbeat stops. And I have to go on my oscilloscope off screen on single capture. And as soon as we press the run button, you get a single pulse. That's it. In burst mode, and I have to capture that also off screen in single shot, we can create a burst of pulses when I press the run button again. And let's say we just want to have five pulses for now. So run. There are my five pulses. And finally in duty cycle mode. Yeah, if you change the mode, you all automatically go into stop mode. So your heartbeat stops and uh, let's say here uh, five pulses on and five pulses off, single capture again, and let's run with this. Okay, I have to, yeah, I go down with the scale a little bit, but uh, you see now 
5 pulses on, 5 off, 5 on, 5 off, 5 on, 5 off, etc. as long as the unit runs. Up to now we used the run stop button to tell the device when to generate pulses, yeah, and when not. Of course you can also issue a run stop command via software and the USB and RS-232 interfaces uh, at the back of the device. But what if you want to precision trigger the whole thing on an external source, let's say a sensor somewhere in the lab or maybe some master timer somewhere else triggering a lot of equipment. And that's what the trigger input is for. In the soft menu button menu you find a trigger gate menu. And here we have a trigger and gate, okay, <laughs> trigger and gate of course, uh, parameters and the first parameter trigger disabled, you can change that to enable. And you saw at the moment I changed that option we stopped generating pulses because now the device is triggered not by run stop but the trigger input. And of course you can set a trigger level as always you go through the different parameters with the next button. You can set a trigger level here quite arbitrary up to 15 volts. Please note these are not oscilloscopes input. These want a voltage between 0 and 30 volts max. Okay so but let's get back to something more sensible like 2.5 volts. That's quite okay. And now we can control the whole thing via the trigger input. And so we have something to see on the oscilloscope. We go into burst mode. You remember the burst mode just generated five pulses when you pressed run and that was it. And we will now trigger five pulses externally by a signal to the trigger input. And for that, of course, I have to, yeah, it's off screen <coughs> because of the space. Uh, yeah, that comes from a function generator, which gives us some uh, trigger pulses. And uh, yeah, that one goes off to the oscilloscope. On the oscilloscope, you see now some pulses, yeah, in red. These are from the external function generator, which is out of the picture and fed to the trigger input. And yeah, nothing else is visible right now unless I, and now this is no longer run stop button with the external trigger active, but a kind of arm button. And you see it here, our heartbeat is dead, but if I press that, yeah, our heartbeat is there again, but it's actually, uh, yeah, not triggering a single pulse, but you can see we have now a burst of five pulses every time the external trigger signal is present. That works of course with the other three modes as well, but it's most useful with the burst mode where you can now create continuous bursts externally triggered and the single pulse mode where you can yeah start the whole sequence that will <laughs> downstream come with an external trigger. But it works also in continuous pulse generation mode and in duty cycle mode. In that case if the external trigger comes the thing simply starts to generate it, its continuous pulse train or its duty cycle pulse train. There is another option for the trigger and that is if the trigger is reacting to the falling edge or the rising edge and uh, yeah the difference is obvious we have a look at it at the oscilloscope. I'm currently triggering at the rising edge and if I change that to falling edge 
I have to rearm the system and yeah, you see the difference. Now our pulse train of five pulses burst starts at the falling edge of our trigger signal. Let's talk about the gate options that affect the T0 module. But uh, before we do that, let's disable the trigger again, go back to the system menu and go back here to continuous mode. Okay, just that we have a continuous pulse train again, internally generated and triggered. And now let's have a look at the gate functions available. For the gate, you have two general options. First, the gate level, analog, the trigger level, which you can adjust. And then if the gate is active high or active low. For the moment, we leave it at active low. And of course, if you're using the gate, you have to feed a signal to the gate. And now let's select the first gate option and well, only gate option that directly influences the T0 module. And that would be pulse inhibit. And have a look at the oscilloscope, what that does. So if I put the whole thing into run mode again, yeah, we are triggering internally now, no longer from the function generator. You see that I'm producing a continuous pulse stream, but for the time when my signal to the gate input is high. During that time, yeah, the name pulse inhibit uh, suggested, uh, the pulses out of the T0 unit are inhibited, okay? So if I choose and we are gate active low, so while my function center generator signal is low, the pulses go through. If I change that to active high, and then I have to rearm the unit, only pulses during the high phase of my signal go through. And that's it. There's another function you can use in conjunction with the T0 module. Uh, for that we return to the system menu and there you have the CTR. That's not control, that's counter menu. So the mo uh, unit has a built-in counter which counts of course, pulses. It's a pulse generator. And currently the counter is off, we leave it at that. You can count different things and one thing you can count is what's coming out of the T0 unit. Of course, and we will come back to that later, you can count the pulses coming out of each channel. But for now we want to count T0 pulses. And yeah, you simply enable the counter and it's counting the pulses. And of course you can in between clear the power counter. Let's disable the counter again and clear it and go back to the system menu. We already talked about the clock output at the back. But uh, you saw, and I won't give you a second shot, maybe I put a picture in right here, clock in and clock out connectors, that we also have a clock output. And this is controlled via this OSC int or oscillator option. So here you can choose if you want you to use the internal oscillator or an external oscillator source connected to that input on the back. And I will now connect something at the back, an oscillator, and then we can have a few on the oscilloscope. And I want, yeah, to feed a 10 megahertz external signal. I zoomed in here on the time scale quite a bit. So in green, the new curve, that's our 10 megahertz external clock fed into the unit. Red is still our gate signal 
and yellow, which I trigger on, is one pol uh, at the moment one pulse coming out of the T0 unit. If I zoom out again, we have the usual picture with, yeah, two pulses led through by the gate. And if I disable that external clock, yeah, the unit basically stops working correctly. Uh, it still generates one pulse at the edge of our gate, but uh, yeah, that's uh, not a desirable state. So let's enable our clock. And also if the external clock within reason uh, changes its frequency, I can do that. I can clock it down to 9 megahertz, 8, 7, 6, 5, uh, okay. Or I can speed things up, yeah. Uh, but you should really do that only uh, <laughs> within reason, otherwise the, the unit expects a 10 megahertz signal, yeah. I think there are phase lock loop and uh, whatnot circuits in that, uh, yeah, multiply the 10 megahertz to the actual internal clock frequency, which should be in the gigahertz range, I guess. Anyway, that was the clock input and now it's time for a little summary. So far we had a look at the T0 internal system timer and mode generator as well as the clock. In detail we have now that picture here. So at the core are the four different mode generators. Continuous, single shot, burst and duty cycle. And I didn't mention any performance numbers before but basically you can set T0, the time between pulses between 1000 seconds and 50 nanoseconds, which translates to 1 millihertz to 20 megahertz. For the number of pulses you get out on a burst or on pulses and off pulses in the duty cycle mode, you can set uh, these between 1 and 10 million. You can start the mode generators either by yeah, the run stop button at the front of the device or via the trigger input. The trigger, yeah, you have two options. Either you trigger the mode generators on the rising edge or the falling edge. We had a look at the gate input, which has a lot of options, but the only options uh, yeah, directly influencing the mode generators here is the pulse inhibit, which allows you from an external source to inhibit the output here from the mode generators. There are a lot of op other options available here for the gate, but uh, yeah, these will influence functionality further downstream in the device. Also here, yeah, equivalent to the trigger, you, the gate can be active high or active low and you can set a gate level uh, as well. You can also set a trigger level here. Of course, we had the clock in the very beginning. We connected our oscilloscope to the clock output, which can be also connected to the T0 pulse train here at the very end. So we had a few at it, but you can also set the clock out output to actually get clock signals from the internal clock between 10 megahertz and 100 megahertz. And of course we have a clock input also at the back where we can feed in also a clock signal between 10 and 100 megahertz in some discrete steps or simply choose to use the internal clock. The whole clock in, clock out stuff comes really uh, into shine if you have several devices with internal clocks and you want to yeah, use one central clock so that all your devices run at exactly the same clock frequency. Finally, we had a look at the counter, which simply, yeah, it count, can count 
several events also further downstream of the device. We will come back to that. But it can also count the T0 pulses that actually come out of here, of the T0 module. One word of warning about all these inputs. These are not oscilloscope inputs good for uh, 300 volts RMS. The gate and the trigger, yeah, you can maximum feed in 30 volts. Yeah, not negative 30 volts, really between 0 and 30 volts. For the clock input, it's between 0 and 5 volts. Keep that in mind. And now it's time to go a little further downstream. Because besides the T0 module, we have also channel timers and mode generators. And in this model, eight of them. They are all identical, so we will concentrate in the next part on a single channel timer and mode generator and what we can do with that, how that can modify the T0 pulse train coming out of here. Uh, for that we will assume for the moment that our output multiplexer is yeah, straight through, which uh, yeah, it should be in factory defaults. So the output of that time and mode generator A is directly fed to the output A. We also won't care for the moment uh, about the options at the output. We will see yeah, pulses at the output B and C on the oscilloscope and uh, that's enough for the moment. So let's continue with these channel timer and mode generators. I already resetted the system back to factory defaults. Yeah, you remember storage and then load defaults. So we are now simply producing a continuous pulse of trains out of the T0 unit. And the options for the different channels you find in the channel menu, of course. This is the data for the channel A. Yeah, and it's identical for each channel. Between the channels, you can change between uh, with the channel button here. So yeah, either simply flip through them by continuously pressing the button or you can choose a button. As mentioned before, we will yeah stay with channel A for the moment. The first option you have for a channel is to enable it or disable it. When a channel is disabled, it will be grayed out at the top of the display. The rest of the parameters here depends on the mode you are in. We are now for channel A in the mode norm or normal. You have three, uh, four modes here available, normal, single shot, burst and duty cycle. And we will go through the parameters of all four modes. Let's start with the mode normal. And just so we can see what's going on, I will put an oscilloscope here into the A output. Okay, I think we're ready to go back to the oscilloscope and have a look at the A output in comparison to what's coming out of the T0 unit. The first parameter we have in normal mode is the delay. And our time scale here at the scope is about 550 microseconds per division. So if I increase the delay by 10 microseconds, yeah, you see the effect immediately. The second parameter <clears throat> Sorry, the second parameter we have is the pulse width. So while the T0 pulses yeah, are just pulses as short as possible, you can manipulate the width of the channel pulses. 
So if I go here also to the yeah, microsecond range and increase that, you see our pulse width is increasing. The third parameter, that's a little bit interesting, is a weight and I will need to go into a single shot for that. Let's say you don't want to output your channel directly the very first pulse coming out of your T0, but instead you want to wait a few pulses until your channel kicks in that you can do with the weight parameter. So if I put that to, yeah, let's say three pulses, I stop here, I go in single shot here, and now I start again, and yeah, I have to move the position. You see one, two, three pulses, nothing happens on our channel output, and then with the fourth pulse, we start in normal mode. In single shot mode, yeah, <clears throat> as the name says, uh, we will only get one pulse. I leave the other parameters exactly the same. So the delay, the width and the weight, three pulses, but we are now in single shot mode for channel A. Of course, I have to stop the unit and put the oscilloscope also into single shot mode. And when I start it now, we have one, two, three pulses delay or wait, and then we get only a single pulse out of our channel A. The third mode was burst, and that's also analog to the T0 bursts. We have now more parameters here. So uh, let's say still three per, uh, pulses wait, and if we scroll down using the next button, we see we have a burst parameter for five pulses. And uh, let's say, let's do a burst with just two pulses, and that's all the parameters here. So only additional parameter is really the burst. Again, stopping the unit, going to single shot for the oscilloscope, starting the unit and that. There you have it. One, two, three, wait, and then two pulses burst. Of course, synchronized to the T0 output. Finally, we have the duty cycle mode. Yeah, that's also <laughs> analog to the T0 duty cycle mode. Uh, for that, I will yeah go with the weight down to zero again, and then you have two more parameters on, yeah, let's say two pulses, and off, let's say also two pulses. And that's it. So two more parameters down below for the duty cycle mode. And we don't have to go into single shot. We can simply go, oh, maybe we should do a single shot. And yeah, there you see. Two pulses we are off, two pulses we are on. Let's have a look at that synth menu here then. For that, I need another channel and uh, <laughs> For the only reason I'm using channel G for this is so I don't have to uh, wiggle around with the cables too much. So we have a third input now uh, on our oscilloscope, which is output of channel G. And yeah, remember to change to the channels. You use that menu here. So sync menu, channel G and yeah, let's go up with the pulse width here also to 10 microseconds. So we see something on the oscilloscope. So the sync menu allows you to change the sync source of each set channel. So normally 
by default each channel is of course uh, triggered or synced by the T0 signal. But you can also trigger a channel from another channel. And in this case I want channel G to be triggered from channel A. And while we have a look at the oscilloscope, I will change that back and forth between T0 and channel A. So our curve down here is the channel G, which is currently synced to channel A. Yeah, our blue curve from before. And if I change that to T0 back, and yeah, maybe go to single shot. You see now it's synced to the T0. Important to note here, I'm syncing it back to channel A. Channel A is currently in duty cycle mode. So two on, two off, two on, two off. But sync wise, yeah, for the sync option, uh, that doesn't matter. Yeah, we only look actually at the delay parameters of the channel we are syncing from. Yeah, to make an extreme example, I can go in channel A to single burst or single shot. Let's make a single shot. Okay, stop here. Go here into single and run. And we see it, it, it doesn't matter. Our yeah, channel G slaved to channel A will simply start here even if the yeah the pulses are masked because we are in single shot mode. Also the channel A weight parameter, yeah, let's say wait for two pulses and stop here single shot oscilloscope run it doesn't have any influence so basically you can use that sync menu to relatively time the different channels to each other instead of timing them all to the T0 pulse train. Now that's all you can do with the channel modules themselves. Now let's go back to our, I cannot see, ah, you can see it, to our gate input. So uh, for the moment we leave uh, channel G synced to channel R in normal mode. Yeah, just generating a specific width of pulse here. And let's check channel A is also in normal mode with a delay and a certain width. And uh, yeah, let's go down with the weight here to zero pulses. So we're just generating continuous pulse trains. And then, and please note that empty soft menu button here. Then we return to our trigger gate menu. Yeah, we already looked what you can do with the trigger gate directly influencing the T0 module. And we have here another gate option, channel pulse inhibit. Now, this will be interesting. Okay, so um, if we use the gate again. We of course have to connect the gate signal, an external from our trusty function generator off screen. And uh, let me clean up this here. Yeah, this was just uh, flipping in the breeze. <laughs> it was connected to the function generator at one point. That's not good for the signal at all. So our gate from the function generator and our channel G again to the oscilloscope. Okay, so channel pulse inhibit. 
Now let's go back to the channel menu. And now we have an option here for each channel gate low and you know that active high and active low the same option or disabled. So basically the same option you had for the general pulse inhibit on the T0 module you have now while we activated the gate port for channel pulse inhibit you have this option here now for each channel. And for channel A I say okay uh, this should be active low that's okay and for channel G we use the option gate off. It was automatically set. Now we have a look at the oscilloscope what the result is. So the top three curves are still the same T0, channel A, channel G. A little bit scaled down to make room for our in green gate signal. Yeah we set it active low. And you see that gate signal is masking out yeah about no exactly two pulses on our channel A. Now there are two things two things to notice here. First the timing. The timing of the gate even in yeah channel pulse mode is still relative to T0. Otherwise yeah you can see it here that pulse here would be masked out but it's not masked out. The next pulse is masked out because T0 falls in to the high area of our gate signal and the pulse afterwards is masked out. Again T0. It's synchronized to T0. The second thing is our output G is still there even if we mask out yeah, some pulses here of output A. So internally the output A signal is still delivered to our channel G for syncing. So that is not affected by channel pulse masking. So there's one more thing regarding the channel timers and mode generators and for that we have to return to the system menu and we have to go to the counter menu and yeah you remember we use the counter on the T0 signal but we can also use it on each channel that we like. For example let's take the channel A. Okay counter is off but I can enable it and now it counts the pulses on the channel. Let's stop that and clear the counter for now. Just to show you what the counter is really counting we uh, first go into stop mode. Yeah. I go to the system menu and we go into burst mode. Yeah, We are configuring the T0 module again and we say we want 1000 pulses. Yeah, Don't forget you can always enter numeric values with the keypad which is sometimes very handy. Sometimes it's better to use the knob and the cursor but yeah. Anyway so 1000 pulses. Okay so we go back to the counter menu and we switch our counter on. It's counting channel A and we do a run. And it's counting only 900 pulses. Uh, the reason being we masked out some pulses of course. So the counter is actually affected by this masking out of pulses. I mean if I change that here to our channel G 
reset the counter and do again a run, I got a thousand pulses. Okay, just be aware. The option we used for the trigger, channel pulse inhibit, it does affect the counter depending on if you activated the gate, yeah, active high, active low on a channel, which you can do. We saw that in the channel menu for each channel. Yeah, let's go to channel H individually. Yeah, gate either disabled, off, active low or active high. Let's leave it at disabled here and go back to the system menu. I guess it's time for another summary. We looked at the options and settings of the channel and timer mode generators A through H, all eight of them, and we have a much detailed picture of those now. Our T0 pulse train comes here at the top left and is distributed through that, let's call them delay modules, to the mode generators. And you have eight of these lines for the channels A to H. Analog to the T0 mode generators, you have four modes, normal, single, burst and duty cycle, which you can select for each channel. Let's talk about the performance data for these mode generators. So the width of a single pulse, you can adjust between zero and 1, 000, almost 1000 seconds again. So 999.9999 and so on in 250 picosecond steps. The weight parameter, yeah, we don't generate a pulse out here right from the first T0 pulse coming in, but we wait for a certain number of T0 pulses. You can adjust that between zero and 10 million pulses. For the burst mode, you can select one to 10 million pulses and the on off duty cycle settings for the duty cycle mode are also between one and 10 million pulses. Going a step back to the delay modules here, these you can set between zero and again almost 1000 seconds in also 250 picosecond steps. In addition, you can, instead of feeding the T0 pulse train directly to the delay stage of each of the channels, you can choose to feed each channel with the already delayed pulse train from another channel. So you can build up relative delayed timings between the channels. At the output of each of the channel mode generators, we have also a gating option. So if our gate is active, yeah, with the option channel pulse inhibit, and yeah, you can set the gate level here, for each and every channel, you can choose if the output of the mode generator should be gated, either yeah, to individually to a, a low gate signal or to a high gate signal. And we saw that on the oscilloscope, the timing of these gates is always relative to the T0 pulse train. Yeah, keep that in mind when you use that gating option. And of course, last but not least, <laughs> we can have the counter count the output pulse of each channel A to H. And then these eight pulse trains, yeah, they go further downstream into our output multiplexer and finally into our output stages. And we will have a look at the options there now. I already reset the unit to factory defaults again and 
set up some patterns for the channel A, G and H. G and H again only so the cables don't get in the way. And this is what I've done. So at the top we have T0 as always. Channel A is in duty cycle mode. One pulse on, two pulses off. No delay and yeah, pulse width is 10 microseconds. Channel G also the same, one pulse on, two pulses off, but one pulse weight to the T0 and 20 microseconds pulse width. And finally H also the same duty cycle pattern, but two pulses weight and width is 30 microseconds. Now let's see what we can do with that output multiplexer. I'm in the channel menu and I'm already selected channel H. Yeah, you know how to select the channels. And this is the output menu for each channel. And we have here two options for the output stage. We will disregard that for the moment and have a look at the multiplexer options. And yeah, this is a little bit crude in handling because this is basically a binary word saying at the moment, yeah, channel H is outputting the pulse train from the mode generator of channel H. So uh, yeah, these eight digits here and uh, they are really only zero and one yeah, each of them, they represent the channels H, yeah, from that side, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So currently channel H is outputting channel H. But I can change that and say it should also output channel G and channel A. And now let's have a look at our signal at channel H. And you see channel H is now outputting the sum of all three channels. So we have still our yeah, channel H signal here, but we have also the channel A signal overlaid, plus we have the channel G signal also overlaid. And if I go back here and just disable, yeah, in the output multiplexer, yeah, it's the other way around. So H is at the front. Switch that off. You see it even more clearly. Yeah. Channel H is now the sum of channel A and channel G. And that's all that is to the output multiplexer. It's quite simple, yeah, but maybe for the handling. But it allows you really to, yeah, stitch together your different pulse trains into one very complex pulse train, especially with different pulse width. That brings us finally to our options for the output stages. I mean, you have an enabled, disabled for each channel, uh, self-explanatory. We will see that on the oscilloscope in a minute. And you have this TTL CMOS setting here, which you set via that menu soft button. So you can either set the output to TTL CMOS, which is of course, uh, five volts or you can freely adjust it and then you get here another option where you can actually adjust the amplitude and you can do that up to 20 volts and please note the outputs are 50 ohms impedance so when you are actually in TTL CMOS and you connect a probably 
50 ohm terminated BNC cable to it, you get 2.5 volts out at the end. Another thing you can do here is change the polarity of the output. So if it's active high or active low. We will also have a look at the oscilloscope, what that does, but yeah, it's also self-explanatory. So we leave the polarity here as it is on active high and we enable the channel again so we can see the signal here. Still the sum of channel A and channel G. Yeah, disable, enable, self-explanatory. So the level, the output level currently at TTL CMOS, 5 volts, yeah, 50 ohm impedance. And we can go into the adjust mode where we can freely adjust, and I have to go into run mode again, freely adjust the output level. Let's go back to TTL CMOS. And you have to go into run mode again when you change those settings. And finally, we had the polarity high low. And this is also self explanatory. If I go to polarity active low, I invert my output signal. That might also come in handy in some applications. And that's it. I think I covered almost every option and setting of that unit related to the actual generation of pulses. I might have skipped two settings in regard to the gate and I didn't talk about the rearming mechanisms of that thing in regards to single shot modes, but uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, video is long enough, you figure that out by yourself. So we started out by having a look at the T0 internal system timer and mode generator, and we detailed that in a kind of a system diagram. We had a very detailed look at the channel timers and mode generators, and also created a little system diagram and uh, Please note here, these diagrams are yeah, functional diagrams. They don't necessarily uh, reflect how that is all implemented in hardware and software inside the unit. They are just for better understanding what each and every of these options and settings does. I completely skipped uh, the more mundane and boring stuff like, uh, yeah, you can, of course, store 16 several settings uh, internally here in the unit and recall them. And uh, yeah, you can set up the digital interfaces at the back and uh, you have other uh, general config stuff. But yeah, the video is long enough as it is. And so yeah, with a little honorable mention of the little function generator, that fed the gate and the trigger and the clock input in between. I say bye.